from the press box is coming to you from a unique location, the Georgia Dome at the State Farm Champions Classic, featuring four powerhouses in college basketball, Kansas, Michigan State, Kentucky, and Duke. From the press box starts right now. From the press box is coming to you from the George Dome amidst all the Champions Classic 2012 action. I'm Lauren Fluker alongside Jamal Williams. Lauren's right. We are bringing it to you right here in the Georgia Dome. And this will be the site of the NCAA Final Four, even though things are just getting started. So we have a long way to go before we reach it there. As Jamal mentioned, things are just beginning, mm -hmm. but some of the teams in NCAA basketball are looking like champions already, Jamal. You're right. UConn just moved into the top 25 at spot number 23 after an impressive victory over Michigan State. Impressive. impressive. Emphasis on impressive because yeah. this is a team that January 23rd mm -hmm. was not ranked. Could not, not be all. found on anyone's polls. No. So this is an incredible feat for UConn. It really is. I'm looking at, I, I mentioned impressive because it was a tough game and it, it's really big that they with new coach, Kevin Ollie, yes, yes, th that's course. what made it so impressive that they were able to come on and come together to make that win. I was really impressed by Napier, the way he mm -hmm. was able to take charge of that team and lead them in the fourth quarter. That That's what impressed me the most about that. Yes, game. and then some people are saying that this is that validation that UConn needed mm -hmm. after Jim Calhoun right. has left and Kevin Ali has succeeded yes. him, that this is what they needed. I, I really think that's more of the media and the fans because the players – from day one respected Ali and they're, oh, they're yeah. out there playing for him because obviously the school did only give him that one year contract. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at it this way. He was validated. Now these players are going out there and they're going to earn him another contract to keep him around. So speaking of action, USC is receiving a lot of attention now after a new addition to the USC Trojans men's basketball team. Thursday, the Trojans got worried that 7'2", 265-pound Omar Arabi would be cleared to play this season. Now, Arabi did have some impressive stats while mm -hmm. at Rice as he broke Rice's record for single season blocks. Yeah, USC coach Kevin O'Neill said Arabi would play a big role with the team this year. And it's hard when you're a guy that big not to play a big role with the team. I know. <laughs> How can you not? But I'll tell you what, that is a definite loss for Rice. Oh, yeah. Definite, it's definite. a huge loss for Rice, but I'm really, at this point, you snooze, you lose. We got to mm -hmm. go to USC and look at it this way. They've just gained a guy who could really be a presence in this lane. He averaged over one block per game last year, and he's been nonstop in the gym. Last year, he relied a lot on his size and athletic ability. This year, I'm going to see, I'm thinking we're going to see a lot more development to his game, and we're going to see him become more of a, a true player. We've got to see how that goes. But the <laughs> recent opening of Georgia Tech's new McCamish Pavilion has not been in the favor of the Lady Yellow Jackets. She's there. right. Georgia Tech fell to the Lady Vile 71 to 54. Jamal, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> this uh, is a team that has done well with mm -hmm. Coach Holly Warlick being Pat Summit's successor. Right. But then you just got to look at it. What happened there with those Yellow Jackets? Uh, they just look sluggish. The Lady Viles just simply outplayed them. Uh, I'm really looking at, we looked at this situation, it's almost identical to the UConn situation where you have a legend stepping down yeah. and a new coach stepping in to be somewhat of the, the successor and the players are really rallying around this new spirit and they're playing up to their potential and they, they Georgia Tech is a good team but yeah. they made them look bad. They did and I'll tell you another thing, I think it's very comforting and settling to know that Pat attends every practice <laughs> and was there at the game. That, that is so definitely that a, that a helpful trend on that transition period. All right, and while we're on the topic of head coaches, Baylor's Lady Bears coach Kim Mulkey has something to be proud about. The Lady Bears are unanimously ranked number one on the Associated Press mm -hmm. women's college basketball polls. This season, the ladies have reached their 41st consecutive victory and they haven't lost yet. Early matchups for Griner, I mean, incredible. She's been 10 of 17 with her shots, mm -hmm. and she's going for her 81st, well, actually 82nd. Now, this next match will make that 82nd consecutive mm -hmm. double scoring 
game. Right. Well, obviously, when you mention the Lady Bears, you, everyone mentions Brittany Griner, Brittany Griner, Brittany Griner. And she's a phenomenal talent in her own right. And I'm not taking anything away from her to say that she shouldn't be mentioned yeah. as much as she is. But I really think the cog that keeps this whole Baylor Bears machine going is Odyssey Sims. Oh, yeah. At that point guard position, she has that veteran leadership. Uh, she's a defensive stalwart. And she's going to take the other team's uh, most prominent offensive option. And with the games on the line, I really think you're going to see the ball put in her hands, as it was at times last season, mm -hmm. instead of Brittany Griner's hands. She's the true leader on this team that really makes them keep going forward. Yeah, and it's funny that you say last season because all five of Moki's mm -hmm. starters on that championship team right. are back, one of which, of course, is your girl there. So. Right. That's pretty good. I know Brittany is not doing it all herself, but mm -hmm. those four ladies, they do help, and they get that job done down there right. in Waco. Well, you're talking about players coming back. Well, we'll be right back after this break with more player with player sound and coaches sound from the post-game press conference. Stay tuned. Your bracket. Have you started yet? Uh, I have. I'll tell you what. Are any of the four teams in the Champions Classic going to be on your bracket? Uh, uh, no. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs, and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. Open Gangnam Star. Gangnam Star. I wish I was in school. If only I had a math test today. I'll stay after class. I'll clean the chalkboard. I wish I was in school. School ends, but free lunches for your kids don't have to. Find your local food bank at feedingamerica.org slash summer meals for help. You know, I, I felt like we, we guarded the post pretty well today. Um, it was just uh, the bigs have to work on, you know, hedging, ball screens. That's, uh, I think, the most important thing. That's kind of how, uh, you know, they got most of their points. I, th I think this was a good game for us. I, I'm not leaving out of here discouraged at all. I'm not happy we lost because you're up in that situation. you got to close, and we didn't close. It was a fairly well-played game for about 35 minutes, and then we, we didn't play very well down the stretch. All right, thank you. I look at the stats and think both teams shot over 50%, and it just looked like a grinded, smash-mouth game. I thought they did a heck of a job. Other than the turnovers, which have been a problem for us, we still did that. But I, I thought Nixer did a pretty good job inside. Um, and I thought our two guards uh, really did a pretty good job defensively, but a real good job offensively in the second half. I'm proud of Keith. I I'm, I'm, I'm really am. I'm, I'm pleased that he... Uh, you have a game like this when you, you make a play like that and you make some plays down the stretch, and that should give you some confidence in what you can do, and hopefully now you'll keep working even harder at it. I knew I had to do whatever I had to do to get in the lane and find Gary on the kick out or find Adrian for a live. You know, I just, I just wanted to make a play for my team. Yeah, what a setting. And so that's, that's one of the great things about this concept. That's why we wanted to be in it to switch locations and to have these four storied programs together under one roof for one night. Yeah, I think it's a, uh, three of our seniors team. Uh, I mean, we, that's what we worked on preseason. I mean, taking control of the team, having to be our team. And uh, tonight, I, I mean, I had, a, I had it going a little bit. So, I mean, they came to me and I was able to come through. Seth was terrific. I think he was the difference maker in the game. So the fact that he's a 50 year senior, uh, has has to help. We we wanted to jump all over their all their guards. Uh, I mean, they didn't really. They had some other guys who were trying to fill in point guard tonight, and we knew uh, they didn't have too much experience. So we had to come in and jump all over them and and, and play tough from the jump. So uh, I feel like we did a good job of that tonight. This is a big game for us because uh, you know the last three ball games we've played very good defensively. Our last exhibition game against Georgia State, and we played well defensively. You know, we, didn't, we weren't a good defensive team last year. It's not a defense that causes turnovers, but it, hopefully it's a defense that you know, takes away threes and 
limit second shots, and uh, uh, we did a, a nice job of that tonight. They're a good team and a good free throw shooting team. They're freshmen. Their minds are, you know, just how it is right now. Just going to, up against a team like Duke, you got to bring it every possession. And um, tonight was a learning process. Um, I think we're just going to get back to work and um, really figure everything out. He is a beast. I don't want to see any of the cute stuff. Get the ball by the guy and dunk on somebody. When he's yelling at me, he just really just, there's not like, you got to listen to what he's saying, not how he's saying. You know, you just got to take it in and just go on to the next play, really. But we got a long, let, let me just tell you, folks, this is, we're a November team right now, and we have to get better. If this is what we look like in December and January, we're not going to be the team everybody thinks. This song was created with heartbeats of children in need. Find out how it can help frontline health workers bring hope to millions of children at everybeatmatters.org. But by the end of the year, I think they'll mm, elite eight, maybe. Okay. You know, it, ju it, well, it just depends on how these freshmen progress. Okay. That's awesome. <laughs> know what? What? Since I got adopted, I've learned a lot about these humans. Uh, I know. I mean, check out these two. It's Flirt City over here. Yeah, I noticed that. It looks like my human is definitely into your human. Oh, look! I think she's getting his number. Nice. Your human's got some sweet moves. Takes after his dog. <laughs> oh, look, they're doing that thing where they put their arms around each other. She kicked up a leg. It's like in the movies. That's awesome. Looks like we're going to be hanging out a little bit more. Welcome back to From the Press Box and mm -hmm. into Hurry Up Offense Court Side Edition. We're going to do things a little bit differently Just and recap what happened tonight on mm -hmm. this very court. Jamal, the first matchup, okay. Kansas and Michigan <clears throat> State. One of the things that was interesting about this team was that the field goals attempts were pretty much the same at 48. And this was a three-point loss. Right. This, this was a very evenly matched Kansas, game. They yeah. grinded it out. This was a physical game. I mean, this is more physical than some of the NFL games I've watched this season. Really, Jamal? Yeah. Oh, I'm going there. I, I mean, really, these guys were out here. They were grinding the whole way. I think one of the things that really stood out as the difference is uh, Michigan State's three-point percentage in the first half, as it was only 14%. That's, that's not good. At all. So what do you think was the major difference here uh, between the two teams? I don't because think this was like kind of an upset. It, I wouldn't call it an upset. Obviously, Michigan State has talent, and I, I see the same thing on Kansas. I think both of these teams are talented. I don't see it as much of an upset as everyone's calling it an upset. But I think that there wasn't really a difference. I think the difference was the play from uh, Keith Applin, mm -hmm. as Kansas really didn't have an answer for him. The competition in this this matchup was great for both teams. So I think this was a, mm -hmm. a great way to start off, you know, against a, a, an incredible team for, for both of them. You're really right because uh, this is a good way, a good early season tough game to, to, to kind of further the, the development of these teams. Because if you have these tough games late in the season, you really don't have time to improve upon necessarily things that are exposed. But in a big venue like this against a big time opponent, oh yeah, oh yeah this is good to have early on because now you can look at the tape, you can see the problems that your team has, and you can have time to fix them. Okay, game two, okay. or the headlining game. That was against <laughs> Duke and Kentucky. The headlining game for more than one reason. Yes. <laughs> so what happened? It was a 75-68 loss for Kentucky. Duke was the victor in this game. Yeah. So where did they go wrong? Because here, Kentucky got 13 turnovers. So I think that's in large part yes. what happened to Kentucky. But then again, uh, I would. This is not a crisp game. This was not as crisp of a game as the earlier game was. I really think that the problem along the line here was that Kentucky's so young, and that Duke, that there there was no rebounding. I didn't see any physical presence mm -hmm. in that lane from them, and this Kentucky team was making youthful mistakes. Oh yeah, and in the end, there Kentucky tried to make a run, but as you mentioned, that that youth 
just mm-hmm. on the court, all five of them really, just was not enough for Duke. That was just, I think, the bottom line. And Coach K did a very good job at coaching his men because it could have very well gone the other way because both of them are incredible coaches. You're right. Obviously, Kentucky did make a run, but Coach Calipari did talk about how his team doesn't understand how to play in big moments. And they started making that run, and then Duke – they, they stopped it, and that it was that veteran leadership that I really think was able to to change the tide. They understand this is a big moment. You know, they do have a guy like Seth Curry, who's a fifth-year senior, and he's a big-time player. He, he can score. He can put points on the board. He can play on defense, and he does have a leadership role in this team. The guy I really was surprised didn't step up as much as I wanted him to was Mason Plumley. I mean, he had three rebounds. You have to get more tougher on the boards than that. He cannot only get three rebounds and expect this team to be able to win a championship or go far in the tournament at all because three rebounds is going to get them out before the Elite Eight, you know, Sweet 16 maybe. That's true. And then tonight, Kentucky also trailed by 14. Yes. And they they got in a close range but Mm -hmm. just still were not able to squeeze that win out. And, you know, Coach K said one of the things that his team did good tonight was they played really good defensively. And they're not a defense that causes turnovers, but one that may allow them more um, takeaways of those three-point shots You're right. for the opposition. They did have a guy who who who's supposed to be that big play guy on them with Alec Poitras, but they didn't really get those beast plays that they needed from him to, to make this team – Put it, push, to push them over the top mm-hmm. to be able to win. You didn't see him get any steals. He got no blocks. It, he was not making those beast plays that would set him apart and push this team toward a victory. Yeah. And, you know, Jamal, this is the venue for this year's Final Four, yes. the Georgia Dome in Atlanta, Georgia. And these two teams could very well meet here again. What do you not, say? What are the odds? Not if Duke doesn't learn how to rebound and not if this Kentucky team doesn't mature and quickly. Because it is very youthful and it is very mistake prone. Okay, and that concludes another episode of From the Press Box. As always, you can check us out on YouTube at youtube.com slash from the press box. Follow us on Twitter at FTP underscore tweets and like us on Facebook. I'm Lauren Fluker. And I'm Jamal Williams. And this is From from the the Press Press Box. Box. Yeah, I'm just anxious to see who's going to be here again. But wouldn't that be great if they were able to come out here again? I I really think a rematch of this... uh, magnitude would be extremely good especially once these Kentucky players have time in the system to develop more the Duke players